What's up, Wolfpack? Happy Sunday. Um, I wanted to get on a video um, back in style, I think, uh, being 2022, a new year, rolling into this year's Open or the beginning of the year programming. Um, it's a big direction change. There's a lot of new um, added stuff, added styles for specific stimuluses. So I wanted to start um, kind of like we did last year when the gym was closed for a few months, uh, talking about the programming for the day. I know the coaches do a great job every single day, um, going over the workout, the intended stimulus, the rep counts, what we're kind of looking for, all that good stuff. But I figured I'd layer it on um, one more um, layer just to make sure that we're all kind of chasing the same uh, goal for the workouts, right? Uh, I write them, I understand them completely, and not everybody gets to get the full in-depth breakdown of kind of what we're looking for. So I thought it'd be cool to to start the videos again for those who are interested in really diving into the workouts and, and knowing exactly what they're uh, supposed to be getting out. So um, we'll do this weekly and we'll start today. So obviously new programming, we're preparing for the Open um, that comes in March. And even if you're not going to do the Open or not preparing for the Open, there's still a ton of benefit that you can have from these workouts um, and from the weekly programming, okay? Which is a different direction, and it gives you an opportunity to really work on some some different skills, some different volume sets, um, some different movement combinations, um, and definitely with the Oli stuff. Have you, as you've seen the last few weeks, we're going to take a break from the heavier sets, right, and work a little bit more of the positions, um, the trigger points, the things that actually make people's Olympic weightlifting um, improve and get better. So um, let's do it. So Monday. Similar to last week, okay, it's an opportunity to push yourself on a movement past your breaking point or slightly past it um, and build that volume ceiling, build that threshold a little bit higher, right? A lot of times we'll put uh, rep counts on the movements, right? And those are those seem to be more achievable because um, you know you can do this many or you know you can segment these sets these ways to get there. So with these uh, movement combinations or these workouts, we want to try to get to that point where we think we would normally break and then go a little bit past it, right? So we're building the, the threshold, the shelf a little bit higher so that as we progress and we go into workouts with bigger volume sets, right? We know, hey, maybe we can do, you know, 12 to 15 wall balls instead of 8 to 10 because we've we've played with it and we've we've improved it. So... Today, or Monday, you're going to do unbroken wall balls at 70 to 75% of last week's biggest set. So we did the back squat into wall balls. So if you did 30, then you're going to take 75% of 30, and you're going to do that. So we're going to add fatigue, and we're going to go into the touch-and-go deadlifts. And we're looking for a weight that we could probably do 15-plus on the first um, set, or, or what sets we've normally been doing with these these weights, depending on the workouts, we want to try to do more. Okay, my, my kind of basis... Um, for these touch and go or these volume sets is I usually try to get to the point where I'm like, I want to break. And then as long as I can maintain form, I'm trying to do as many reps past that breaking point. So get to the point where you want to stop or you normally would stop and then try to do a few more reps. That's going to help you rebuild that threshold a little bit higher. And then obviously progress the movement volume and, and hopefully the efficiency uh, as time goes on. Okay. So three sets of that. We want to definitely utilize this rest. So if you finish and you don't need the rest, then we missed the intensity portion of this um, workout, okay? The unbroken wall balls should be challenging and fatiguing, but they shouldn't be uh, deathly fatiguing. Like I said, we're just adding volume going into the deadlifts to make them a little more challenging. That way, when you do the deadlifts, you have to focus on breathing, you have to focus on movement efficiency, right, to get that rep count that we want. So you should need this rest, um, and if we didn't communicate with the coach, hey, what can I do to uh, achieve the stimulus? Maybe it's a little bit more weight. Maybe it's a few more reps. Maybe it's bumping up the wall ball number. Could be a lot of different things. So, okay. Um, and then B is just some um, accessory work. So we don't have any step overs and workouts this week. So we have a chance to do a little bit uh, heavier weight on the, de uh, the step ups just because we're not combining it with really anything. So challenge yourself on these is five on each leg up and over the box. And then we're just going to uh, superset it with some Cossack squats. You can hold a kettlebell kind of in this front rack position. Just one of them, just some extra single leg volume. So a lot of things in CrossFit are, 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 are dual leg or both leg, right? Wall balls are both legs, deadlifts are both legs, squats are both legs. So strengthen the single legs a little bit here. Um, 
So maintain good positions and have some fun with it. Okay. Um, I'll do the other days uh, later, post them out. But if you have any questions, comment below or you can ask your coach uh, in class and they can definitely set you up. So have a great week, Wolfpack. Uh, I'm excited for another week of workouts and we will see you in the gym. Peace out.